Ever wondered how classes work in C++? Well, in the world of C++, a class is essentially a user-defined data type. Think of it as a blueprint for creating objects. Now, you might be wondering, what are objects? Objects are instances of a class, encapsulating data and behavior. To put it simply, classes provide a structure, a skeleton if you will, that we can use to create objects. These objects are like the flesh and blood that fill out the skeleton, giving it life and functionality. In the grand scheme of programming, classes model real-world entities. They're like a digital representation of things we encounter in our everyday lives. For instance, we could have a class representing a car, a person, or even a high-rise building. This ability to model real-world entities makes classes a fundamental concept in object-oriented programming, often abbreviated as OOP. At this point you might be thinking, that sounds interesting, but how do I use classes in C++? Well, that's what we're here to explore. In the upcoming scenes we will delve deeper into defining a class, understanding access specifiers, and getting to grips with constructors, destructors, and member functions. So, whether you're an experienced programmer looking to brush up on your C++ skills, or you're a complete novice hoping to get your foot in the door of the programming world, this journey promises to be an enlightening one. We'll peel back the layers of complexity, one by one, and by the end of it, you'll have a solid understanding of classes in C++. Now doesn't that sound exciting? So, buckle up and let's dive right in, shall we? Let's get started. So, how do you define a class in C++? Well, let's take a spin with a simple example, a car class. Now, a class is like a blueprint. It tells the compiler what an object of this type will look like and how it will behave. In our car class, we have three member variables, or data members, brand, year, and price. These are the characteristics that define our car. Think of it as the make, model, and cost of a real-world car. Then we have a member function or method named display info. This function is a behavior of the car. It's like a car's ability to display its information on a dashboard. In our case, it prints the brand, year, and price to the console. Now, how do we create an actual car, or in programming terms, an object of the car class? We do it in the main function by declaring car my car. Just like that, we've created a car object named my car. But our car doesn't have a brand, year, or price yet. We can set these by using the dot operator, like my car brand equals sign Toyota. This tells the compiler that the brand of my car is Toyota. We can do the same for year and price. Finally, we can call the display info method on my car to print its information. We do this by using the dot operator again, like my car display info. And voila! The console will display brand Toyota year 2022, price $25,050. But what if we want to keep some data or behavior private, only accessible within the car class itself? Or what if we want some things to happen automatically when a car object is created or destroyed? For that, we have access specifiers, constructors and destructors, which we'll cover in the upcoming scenes. Remember, a class is a user-defined data type that encapsulates data and behavior. It's a key concept in object-oriented programming that helps us model real-world entities, promote code reusability, and improve code organization. And that's how you define a class in C++. Next, we'll look at access specifiers. Access specifiers control where class members can be accessed, but how do they work? Let's take a look at the two main types, public and private. When a class member is declared as public, it can be accessed from anywhere, even outside the class. This means you or any other programmer can directly manipulate and utilize these members in your code. Now, private access specifiers are a bit more exclusive. These members can only be accessed within the class. They're like the secret recipe to your grandma's famous cookies. Only certain people, or in this case, functions within the class, know about them. This can be incredibly useful for keeping certain data or methods hidden and protected from outside interference. By default, if you don't specify an access specifier, the members of a class are private. It's like the class is saying, unless told otherwise, this stays between us. Access specifiers help us control the accessibility of class members. Now let's move on to constructors and destructors. Constructors and destructors play special roles in a class. Want to know why? Let's dive in. In the realm of C++, a constructor is a unique member function that's summoned into action when an object is born, that is, when it is created. 
It shares its name with the class and can be overloaded to initialize objects in different ways. Picture this, you have a class named My Class. When you create an object of My Class, the constructor is the first one to greet it. It's like the welcoming committee of a class, setting the stage for the object's existence. Here's an example. In class My Class, you have a public constructor. The moment an object of My Class is created, it triggers the constructor. And you'll see constructor called printed on your screen. Now what about when an object's life comes to an end? That's when the destructor steps in. It's the counterpart to the constructor, a special function that is called when an object is about to be destroyed. Like a constructor, a destructor also shares its name with the class, but it's preceded by a tilde, tilde. In our my class, the destructor will bid a farewell to the object when it's about to be destroyed. If you destroy an object of my class, it triggers the destructor and you'll see destructor called printed on your screen. Constructors and destructors might seem like small parts of a class, but they have a significant job, managing the life cycle of an object. They ensure that when an object enters the world of your program, it's properly initialized, and when it leaves, any necessary cleanup happens smoothly. So remember a constructor sets up the initial state of an object and a destructor tidies up before the object's demise. They're like the alpha and omega of an object's life, marking the beginning and the end. Constructors and destructors manage object creation and destruction. Next, we'll discuss member functions. Member functions are crucial in a class. Do you know how they work? They are, in essence, the functions that are defined within a class. They work on the data members of the class and can be called on the objects of that class. Let's consider an example. Imagine a class named Rectangle. This class has two private data members, length and width. Now, we want to calculate the area of the rectangle. We can do this by defining a member function within the class called calculate area. This function multiplies the length and width data members and returns the result. So, by calling the calculate area member function on an object of the rectangle class, we can easily get the area of the rectangle. This is the power of member functions in a class. They allow us to manipulate and work on the data encapsulated within our objects. Member functions allow us to perform operations on class data. Now, let's wrap up with encapsulation and abstraction. Encapsulation and abstraction are key principles of object-oriented programming. How do they apply to classes in C++? Let's start with encapsulation. This principle refers to the bundling of data and methods that operate on this data within a single unit, which in our case is the class. The data in the form of member variables is wrapped within the class and access to it is controlled through member functions. This means you can't directly manipulate the data. Instead, you interact with it through methods that are part of the class. This helps maintain the integrity of the data and ensures that it can't be accidentally modified in ways that are not intended. Next, we come to abstraction. This principle involves hiding the complex implementation details and exposing only what's necessary. When you're using a class, you don't need to know how it's implemented internally. You only need to know what methods it provides for you to use. This makes the class easier to use and reduces the potential for errors. Imagine a television remote control. You don't need to know how it works internally to be able to use it. You only need to know what buttons to press. The internal workings of the remote are abstracted away from you. This is the concept of abstraction in a nutshell. How do these principles help us? Encapsulation and abstraction promote code reusability, modularity, and maintainability. When code is encapsulated within classes and methods, it can be reused in different parts of your program, or even in different programs. This saves you from having to write the same code multiple times. The abstraction principle makes your code more modular and easier to maintain. When you need to change how something works, you only have to change it in one place, within the class or method that implements it. With encapsulation and abstraction, classes provide a solid foundation for organizing your code in C++. That's a wrap on classes in C++, and I hope you now have a clearer understanding of this fundamental concept.